Okay, having a look at the uh, some solutions to the first, um, the tech-free paper for 2022 for the multiple choice questions for maths methods. So the first question has, we're given the derivative function and we want to see which statement applies with regards to the original function. So from this, we can see that we have two stationary points, one just after A and one at zero. And so looking either side tells us about the gradient either side of that stationary point. So we've got positive and negative. So if we've got a negative, um, so coming down, across and up, that's a minimum. And then over here, we've got positive and then negative. So we're coming up, across and down, which is a maximum. So when we see our graph, we know we're going to have one local minimum and one local maximum. So A is our answer for that one. Going on to question two, we've got a uh, binomial random variable um, arises from the number of successes of n independent Bernoulli trials. A context not suitable for modeling using a binomial random variable is recording the number of, and we're going through some options and deciding which ones apply. So we've got heads when a, uh, so recording the number of heads when a coin is tossed 12 times. So for Bernoulli, we need a set probability, a set number of trials, uh, probability remains the same um, throughout the trials. So here we've got a number of trials, we've got probability of heads for a coin, so the probability is staying the same. So that is a, um, would work for a Bernoulli trial um, and a binomial random variable. Then we've got left-handed people in a sample of 100 people. So we would be assuming left-handed is success. Um, our number of trials is 100 and the probability would remain the same throughout. So that one's not um, going to be, so that one's suitable as well. So um, it doesn't fulfill the criteria that we're looking for for not suitable. Then we've got times a player hits a target from 20 shots where each shot is independent of all other shots. So we've got an and value, we um, have a probability and they're independent of each other. So that one's out. Uh, then we've got red marbles selected when three marbles are drawn without replacement. So that's our key factor there. As soon as we're saying without replacement, that means the probability is gonna change from one trial to the next. So our answer for that one is going to be D. For question three, um, you need to calculate um, the area between the curve. So a few things that we'll need to do there is, um, one, we need to find um, the integral of that function. Uh, so we've got our y there. So our integral will be the um, 9x minus x cubed on three. And we want to know what values to look between. And so because it said uh, for the x-axis, we need to solve when y equals 0 to find out those values. So we're going 0 is equal to 9 minus x squared. So x squared is equal to 9. So x must be plus or minus 3. So we're going to be putting in negative 3 to positive 3 there. And we're going to sub that into that equation. So when we've got our um, positive 3, we've got 9 times 3 minus 3 cubed over 3. And we're taking away from that um, 9 times negative 3 minus 3 cubed, negative 3 cubed over 3. So we end up with um, 18 here, and we're subtracting negative 18 from that, which gives us our 36, which is our answer of C. Then we've got the um, weekly amount of money a company spends on repairs is normally distributed with a mean of 1200 and a standard deviation of 100. Then we're told some values for the probabilities. So when we sketch what that looks like, we've got our 1200 for our mean and our standard deviation is 100. So we're going up in 100s. So we've got 1300, 1400, 1500 and down, 1100, 1000 and 900. Now we're told um, that we um, want to find for between 950 and 1300. So we're trying to find this area under the curve here. 
Now we're told that um, when z is less than negative 2.5, it's 0 0.062. So that's telling us because we've got one standard deviation, two standard deviation, three, that's the 2.5. So we're being told this part of it here is 0 0.0062. Then we're told when z is greater than one, it's 0 0.1587. So that's this part of it. And we want to know the in-between. So we know those three parts would add to one. So if we can add these two together and then subtract it from one, uh, we can work out that um, probability. So when we do the 0 0.0062 plus 0.1587, we get 0 0.1649. And when we do one take 0.1649, that's going to give us 0 0.8351. So you may have to do some working out there if you um, can't do that in your head. Now, question number five. Oh, did I say what that corresponded to? Sorry. Um, the answer of C there. So for question five, we've got is which normal distribution curve best represents a normal distribution with a mean of one and a standard deviation of 0.5? So immediately I'm looking going, okay, where have I got a mean of 1? So this one's got negative 1, that's out. This one has a mean here of um, 0 0.5, so that's out. This one has a mean of 1, and this one has a mean of 1. So I'm choosing between these two. Now I want a standard deviation of 0.5. So then I'm looking here and going, okay, when I look at my curve, um, I, if I go out here, I've got... Um, so my 0 0.5 will be there, two, three, four standard deviations. I should be nearly to nothing. So when I look at this one, here's my one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and see how I'm almost to nothing with my three. So that means D is my answer for that one because I'm looking at that standard deviation where that gets me to on my curve. So I know that once I get to three standard deviations, I should be almost um, zero there, uh, which this one obviously was not. Okay, question six. Now for question six, you do need to know the shapes of your um, LN functions. So here we can look for certain features. So we want that it is um, has a vertical shift of negative three. We want a horizontal shift of three. Um, and we also know that it has been flipped. So our normal shape is more like these two here. So they're out. So then we're looking at these two that are the flipped ones. But here, because we've got x plus 3, that's shifting it back negative 3. And we can also sh see that it has been shifted down. So to look at this a little bit here, to negative 3. So our answer then is B for this one. Usually with our multi-choice, we can get rid of two options straight off. Okay, question seven. It requires you to remember your rules for sector of a circle. So, and also your sine rule for area of a triangle. So with this one, we have some information given to us. So we've got our um, angle here of theta. So if we had just, we're well, looking at the triangle, it would be a half a b sine c. So it's going to be a half of r times r times sine theta. So we get a half r squared sine theta. Then if we were looking at the whole um, sector of the circle, we would be saying that that was uh, theta on 360 times pi r squared. And so then for the shaded bit, it's going to be our theta on 360 pi r squared take away a half r squared sine theta. So obviously we can take out a common factor of r squared out the front and then we would have theta on 360 um, pi minus a half sine theta. Now we can also, because we can have a look here, they've taken a fraction out. So if we take out a fraction of a half, which will be our r squared on two, then um, that leaves us with theta on 360. Oh no, not theta on 360 anymore. That'll make theta on 180 
um, because that would give you the 360 when you did the 2 times 180. Um, we've got our pi there, minus sine theta. So that has then got us down to, we know it's not this one here with the r squared on 4, r squared on 2 with the theta, that's not going to work. Um, so we've got this one of the form there. However, um, we've been told that theta is in radians. So that then means if we've got pi, um, uh, our theta's in radians, our pi, then pi on 180 is going to be um, just 1 when we do pi divided by 180. So that leaves us with um, B as our answer there through that simplifying. Now question 8. We've got um, in a survey, 80 respondents exercise daily while 120 did not. So we need to work out the probability based on that. So that's 80 out of 200. Um, and so that will give us 8 over 20, which will be 4 over 10 or 0 0.4. So then, so we're calculating the approximate 95% confidence interval. So that already takes out those last two because they've got the 0.67 rather than 0.4. Um, then we know that when we do the 95%, we're using the 1.96. So we know that's probably going to be A. And then we are looking to check that the N is the right number there, which is our 200. Um, and so A is our answer. Now for question nine, we're looking at the trapezoidal rule. So um, it tells us four strips. It's between zero and four. So that means the width is going to be 1 and we know that the area is equal to the width over 2 of the ends plus 2 times the middles. A simplified version of the rule that I like to use. So I've got 1 over 2 and then I want to work out what the ends will be. So when I sub in 0, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1 and I want the square root of that which is 1. Then if I put in a 4, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, the square root of that is 3. And then the middles are going to be when I'm subbing in 1, 2, and 3 into that. So if I sub in 1, I've got 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so I've got the square root of 3. 